Well, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another gear review. Hope you're having a great day and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to watch this video. Appreciate you guys so much. You know, recently I was able to go on a multi-day backpacking trip into the snowy range of Wyoming, had an amazing time, but I needed to pick out a really tough mid-weight survival knife to process wood, help us build fires and do my carving and whittling and just as a backup survival tool, worst case scenario. Scenario. And the knife that I decided to take with me to fulfill that role is a blade that I've had now for several months, used it multiple times leading up to this trip. So I knew some of its capabilities and it's the Reef Knives F6 Leku, I believe is how you pronounce that, Leku. Uh, is that kind of style. This is an American made CPM 3V steel, six inch beast of a blade. And it bites and splits wood like the Becker BK2, but possesses the same type of finesse and carving skills that the SE6 has. So it is an extremely capable high-end midweight survival knife that I'm gonna break down with you today. Now, it's not perfect. There are a few things that I'd like to see and that I noticed that could be tweaked as well as just as we run in competitive options and discuss value to performance and all of that that I'm gonna break down with you. Man, I have so much to say. This is like fifth take on the blade. <laughs> Let's just dive right in. I've just like, oh, I got so much and I'm like stumbling over myself. I'm just, I am pumped guys about this tool. It's rare that you get a tool that performs quite like this blade performs. So from handle to tip, you are looking at six inches, 5.75 inches of cutting, three sixteenths of an inch thick all the way through. Good tip right there. So still precise enough, but very tough. We were doing a lot of stabbing with that. Um, we have a saber grind that goes about halfway down. So there's there's that weight and thickness on the front end that you get with a, a saber grind. So it's not a very high, it's not a full flat. Uh, I think the geometry and where the choice was to put that transition is excellent. Convex edge still has the factory edge. We were trying to get it to dull, burr, get a little roll, get a little chip or something, could not do it with all the use that we were doing. So that's the benefit to having a premium steel, CPM 3V steel uh, with a Rockwell of uh, 58 to 60. So you can go a little bit higher, but then you tend to get a little bit of brittleness. I think that's excellent for this type and idea of this style of tool of a mid-weight survival knife so that it has lateral strength. It's gonna spring back. It's not so stiff that it's rigid and gonna snap on you. And so what that means is a 90 degree spine as well. So it'll throw sparks like crazy. You can scrape with it. It's great. Great for batoning, no swedges, anything like that. Batoning was a huge aspect in chopping. We needed a chopper and we needed a batoning tool for the fire. We had a fire roaring most of the time we were out there and it was pretty chilly for a lot. We had rain coming through. So it was a, necess it was a necessity to have a fire prep tool. And this got all of it j done. Just bit into wood like a megalodon. I mean, just <clears throat> took half that whale out of a branch without any issue. And it was somewhat surprising. Um, just like, wow, okay. <laughs> Dude. Look at that bite. Yeah. Oh, it okay. bites. Grinding bites is good, good, man. Yeah. Bites real good. Whoa. Look at that, dude. Whoa, dude. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this thing takes off big it chunks. Pretty good. Perfect. Particularly at the weight class, about 13 ounces. So definitely in that mid-weight survival knife range, right around the weight of like a B Becker BK7, an SE6, uh, and lighter than say an SE5 or a BK2. So that's excellent for what we're seeing. And then the splitting capability, splitting down logs. I mean, we were going through all kinds of stuff, just uh, hammering on it as hard as we could. And that was some dense wood that we were going through with a lot of twists and a lot of knots like nothing. I mean, it was epic. And because of that 5.75 inch cutting, Edge, you're able to span a good diameter, about three and a half inches, no problem, and still have plenty left over. We definitely went through some four inch logs without issue. So chopping and batoning for such a compact, lightweight, if you will, under a pound tool, that is very impressive and could easily delim stuff about two inches in diameter or less, no problem with a few swings, 
and easily crack open stuff three and a half to four inches all day long from our experience, not only on the trail, but in other um, environments. So all excellent, but what about the finer work, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of like what the Becker BK2 and knives like it can do. What about the finer work? Because of the edge geometry, the convex edge, just the style of it, I was able to do a lot of excellent feather sticks, excellent, you know, fire prep to make those, but also just to make a spear or, you know, do uh, another type of notch, you know, to get, replace a, a tent peg that broke, you know, those type of things. You're able to do that and work with the tool in a way that oftentimes with bigger blades is just not fun. So it was able to bite in and do what it needed to for a midway survival knife. Of course, you know, like the Reef F4, because it's thinner, it's smaller, it's lighter, it's more nimble. You know, just even a simple Mora tag team with this, you know, would definitely um, take it, you know, those will do a slightly better job, but for an all-in-one compensating tool, excellent on the finer work for what you would experience and, you know, cordage cutting and all that stuff, easily done with this blade. So it's got that excellent crossover capability of chopping, batoning, but also being able to fuzz stick, carve, and do the finer work as well for this style of tool. Now to the ergonomics. You know, sometimes survival knives can be a little tricky. <laughs> they can be a little wild on the handle side. And then the ergonomics hurt the finer capability or chopping. So ergonomically contoured, I mean, excellent. And it's big and full. You know, I have large size hands. I tend to complain sometimes if the necks are narrow or if it's too thin a blade. Uh, we have a little bit of swelling, flaring out, milled out, lanyard hole out the back. Definitely needs a lanyard hole just because of the style. There's no bird beak or anything like that. But if you do your reverse thumb roll grip, you can chop all day long and it never wants to come out of your hand. You can just get that wrist flick and it is excellent that way. So that just to kind of help you guys out, you can literally go like thumbs up, dude, and then you just hook it and wrap, good to go. So this style, with that type of lanyard, excellent. Um, you have a maximum thickness of 0.95, almost an inch thick here. You have a maximum height of zero, or excuse me, of 1.1 and a handle length of five and a quarter inches. So the girth is excellent. I was super happy with that. Fills out my hands so nicely. Got backup space, good dimensions on the neck, contoured G10 handle scales that go with that guard. So you have a very mild guard. It's all milled, rounded, so it feels excellent. You know, we've been doing some reviews on some knives that they didn't take the, the handle scales with the guard, and therefore it causes a hot spot. Nice and milled, feels great. So I could easily get up there, choke up on the tool, use it. It's not so aggressive that it's like a tactical knife, but it's not like a puko where it's non-existent. So, I mean, I think that was perfect. Three screws, keep it locked into place, never had any rattling, loosening, really nice and Loctite. And you got a nice flattened pommel back there for a tent peg or some mild hammering, depending on what you would need to do. Now, with that said, there is something I'd like to see a little bit different on this handle. And you can get these in several different color combinations. This again is the tan. They have green and black currently, I believe. So it says even on the description, smooth G10 handle scales, right? And they are smooth. They're not Nalgene smooth, but they're close. There's an ever so slight swirling. I mean, you can feel something there, but because of the style of the knife and the excellent contouring, that when you are doing the harder tasks, especially chopping, carving, whittling, no problem. And that's where it's fine on the F4 that I have over here that we'll run in here just for size dimensions in a moment. But because of how large this is and you're doing batoning and then you're doing chopping and it's chopping like a beast and it's biting in and taking out chunks like crazy, and because there's no real abrupt angles or a deeper, you know, handle hook swell, if you don't have the lanyard, it is gonna fly out of your hand. And it, I wish that there was a little bit more texture on the handle. This is just for our perspective here. We'll be running in competitive options momentarily. Uh, here's a Bradford Knives uh, G10 on this one. And you can see there, there's slightly more ribbing and I just have more of a tactile feel. Um, work tough knives as well tend to have a little bit more ribbing just to give you a little extra to grab onto. Um, some liners in there just to make the handle pop would be awesome just to give it a little bit 
um, more accentuation, but a little bit heavier texture, especially on this six inch one, would just take it to the next level of ergonomics. Comfortability wise, it's great, but some texture on the harder work would be excellent. I'm gonna probably end up either doing some little traction points with my Dremel or some stippling at some point on these G10 handle scales. Now this sheath is a Kydex sheath. There are leather options that are available. You can order them off the site for righties or lefties. So you can determine that. So that's great that there are ambidextrous options available. Taco design, so it's gonna cut down on footprint and weight. Good lashing points. It does have a fire steel loop that is flexible. It's Kydex, so it kind of gives a little bit. So depending on the diameter of your fire steel should fit most, it is removable if you don't you know, need that. Has a 360 degrees rotatable polymer clip that is very strong, tough, really locks into place. You could unscrew it. It does, you have, do have access to it, so you could remove it, do a blade tech lock or other style of, you know, like a dangler with some attachment points, you know, things like that. So it gives you a lot of variety in that way on the Kydex. And then again, there is that leather option as well. Pretty quiet. So that's really good. And then a good thumb ramp right there to be able to pull off. I would say decent tension, you know, it snaps in. Because it's pretty heavy blade, if I jerk this, it's gonna go flying. Um, so if you, you know, wanted it a little bit tighter on the Kydex, you could obviously just heat up this little portion right here and kind of form fit it a little bit tighter. So it's good for, angled down carry or cross draw carry, but I wouldn't be you know strapping this this way without some modifications on the Kydex. I do have to say, I love the backdrop because I can just rest stuff a lot easier <laughs> while I talk. Now we'll refer to that in just a moment. We're gonna do competitive options. I'm gonna run in that F4 uh, in just a moment. I do wanna just read off their warranty before we get into pricing and all of that, which is great. And uh, I've been blessed to be able to actually have a few phone calls with Stu, the owner of Reef Knives. Um, you know, this is a family business that he is launching from scratch, basically. And uh, he really wants these knives, you know, to obviously be something that's like heirloom, like you used it your whole life, beat on it and then pass it on. And so from their warranty, we stand behind our products. Uh, Reef knives are heirloom quality tools and should last a lifetime. If your knife is defective or suffers catastrophic failure during use, we will repair or replace at no cost to you. So that is excellent. Goes on Reef Knives is a family business that when you invest in a Reef Knife, you become part of our family. We take care of our own. That's why we are happy to go above and beyond the normal replacement of your knife. At no charge, if it is lost or stolen, all we ask is proof of a police report. And sounds like they will you know, get you a new blade. Um, this warranty is fully transferable and does not expire. No warranty registrations or receipts are necessary to initiate or validate a claim. If you believe your knife is defective and eligible for warranty replacement, please contact them. Uh, they do not warranty against rust or normal wear and tear. So there you go. I mean, so there is an aspect of, of standing behind your blade uh, that Reef Knives is presenting to you and me. And so if you are considering a Reef Knife, just wanted to run in the smaller, compact, you know, companion blade. This is the F4, about four inches long, five thirty seconds of an inch thick, very similar profile, CPM 3V steel, made in America. So um, just wanted to kind of run that in there, or maybe you own this one, you're considering this one, just so you have some, you know, dimension, some size there. Now let's go ahead and talk price. Uh, Stu did, did send this over to me to test out, review for you guys, give you my feedback, pros, cons, help you decide for yourself if this is the right tool for you. I will have not only these two blades in hyperlinks below, not only to his website, but also Blade HQ uh, that is currently carrying reef knives, as well as some of the competitive options that I'm running in here just to give you some good food for thought. So I appreciate it. If any of the designs we're about to talk about make sense for you, use those hyperlinks below. So this blade currently goes for $384. So almost 400 bucks, which is definitely premium pricing. I mean, we're talking Spartan blades and Winkler knives territory for the F6. So you're gonna have to determine for yourself are the materials, the design, the features, the capabilities that you're seeing in this video making sense for you or not? Uh, you know, just for some perspective here, this is a Case and Winkler uh, collaboration. This is the Skinner I'm working on right now. Uh, ADCR V2, G10, leather over Kydex. I mean, this is like a $340 knife, much lighter, much smaller than uh, what you're gonna get with the F6. So. 
you know, maybe for some people you're like, yeah, totally. That, that pricing is, is right there for me for what I can get and what I can do with this blade. And then here we have here the Bradford Knives uh, 5.5 Guardian. CPM 3V Steel, USA made, G10 handle scales, Kydex sheath, about 275. Now, this is a great belt knife. Uh, the neck is slightly slimmer. The handle ergonomics are much larger and fuller on the F6. Uh, and this weighs about seven and a half ounces. So, you know, the F6 is gonna be almost double the weight putting it definitely in that survival knife category realm. Really what you're paying for is more the capability and uh, the warranty. You know, that's why I wanted to read that to you. And there's definitely something to be said about the value that a tool like that brings. So overall, the design, the features, the quality, the fit and finish, I'm very, very pleased with. Uh, and Stu is doing an excellent job and it'll be up to you guys to determine for yourselves, does this design make sense? Um, and whether or not it's worth throwing in your guys' rotation. So I hope this video has shown you its capabilities and helped you guys better make that choice. I invite you to subscribe. If you're not yet a subscriber, I'm throwing up content like this every single week. Uh, I invite you to check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.